Father Hearns. Well, of course, Thomas Hearns, 25 knockouts in his 27 victories without a loss. One of the big ones came on the CBS Sports Spectacular against Bruce Curry, his toughest opponent to that date. He stopped him in the third round. Well, you know, Curry is a good puncher and Hearns is a good puncher. When two guys like that get together, something has to happen. Something that really has to give. And there it is now, Curry going down. Well, for Thomas Hearns, it was another stepping stone in his pursuit of the championship. It now looks like he's going to be fighting Pepino Cuevas for the WBA Welterweight Championship this summer. They hope to have that fight right here in Detroit. I asked him if it affected his preparation for this fight against Eddie Gazzo. No, it's not hard for me to prepare for this fight because uh, I'm really not thinking about a fight with Pepino Cuevas as of right now. I'm thinking about getting past this fight this afternoon and then we'll go on to something else, think about Cuevas later. Oh, and Thomas Hearns as Eddie Gazzo looking for a shot for the Junior Middleweight Championship against Ayub Galuli and Thomas Hearns now pointing ahead to a championship match for the WBA welterweight title against Mexico's Pepino Cuevas. Hearns on the right of your screen, six foot one inch tall, weighed in at 149, two pounds over the welterweight limit. Gazzo 155, and a hard right by Hearns standard Gazzo immediately, but Gazzo now gets inside. There's that experience tying up Hearns before any further damage. He is. Uh, said to be five foot eight looks closer to five six to me Gil Clancy if he's and five I, foot eight I just became six foot <laughs> he weighed in at 155 44 wins four losses two draws 30 years of age from Managua number three ranked junior middleweight by the WBA Gazzo going to the body Hearns 21 years of age 27 and 0 with 25 knockouts Number two ranked welterweight by both the WBA and the WBC. There's a right hand. Gazzo really right on, nailed. The on the chin. He went to the he floor. Him in, Tim. You, you can't get hit harder than that. He caught him coming in with a right hand. Right on the button. Good the referee short punch. is Bobby Watson looking into those eyes. Gazzo says he can continue. Tremendous right hand punch from explosive Thomas Hearns. Referee just got in the way, moved between the two fighters. Gaza was staggered again, and he is in big trouble, now trying to tie up Hearns. Thomas Hearns said he was not looking past this fight. He may not have to think about it too long. Gaza looks very wobbly. Yes, he does, Tim. He got hit with a hurt with the first punch of the fight, and then he ran into that big right hand. Very stocky customer from Nicaragua, Eddie Gazzo, but that explosive punching power has taken the strength out of his legs right here in the first round. A minute to go in round one. Another right hand landed from Hearns. Tim Gazzo may have been a world champion. I don't know how. He's the most awkward fighter I've ever seen. The right to the chin by There he goes, Tim. Hearns again. He's gone now. He's gone, Tim. Through the ropes, Eddie Gazzo. He's gone, Tim. He got hit with a beautiful right hand again. Right on the button. Well, this is uh, clearly an easy victory for Thomas Hearns. It's all over. A first round knockout for Thomas Hearns. His Detroit fans on their feet. And uh, we have just witnessed uh, what was certainly a total mismatch despite the weight advantage and experience advantage of Eddie Gazzo and the championship experience, Thomas Hearns was clearly too much for him. And we're gonna see that knockdown punch again, the one that finished him off. He was knocked down once early in the round with a tremendous right hand. And then about 45 seconds later, another right hand will finish him off. Hearns on the attack, there he goes into the ropes and falling through, and it was all over. He could not get up and prepare to go uh, by the count of 10. Let's see it once more from another angle, Gil. Well, I'll tell you, that first right hand when he caught him coming in, that was the big one, Tim. How he survived that, I don't know. Thomas Hearns. His 28th victory without a loss, 26 knockouts. Now he can just think about Pepino Cuevas. He doesn't have to think about this one for very long at all. It's all over at, uh, in the first round here at the Cobo Arena in Detroit. And we'll be back to talk to the winner, Thomas Hearns.
241 of the first round for Thomas Hearns. Uh, Thomas, I don't think uh, if he had stayed with you any longer, the result would have been any different. You were clearly too much for Eddie Gazzo. You hadn't seen him before. Was there any concern on your part about the unknown? Uh, no, it wasn't at all. I, in fact, I don't like going into a fight knowing too much about an opponent anyway. Why not? It's because uh, he's going to fight me a lot different than he would fight anybody else anyway. So he's going to come in and fight me uh, all together, different strategy than he would fight, uh, say, the guy that he had lost to. 241, another knockout victory for you. Do you ever get tired of hitting down on guys? I mean, that's a big advantage, that height. It seems like you're always uh, punching down. No, I do not get tired <laughs> of punching down. As long as it stay there, I'll definitely punch down. Well, this was not much of a workout for you in terms of preparation for an upcoming championship fight. What are your feelings about that? Would you like to have a tougher one? Oh, no. Well, I wouldn't, definitely wouldn't like to any tougher than what it was because my strategy was to get in there and get him out of there as quick as can, if, if that was possible. Because, you know, I'm looking up for this championship fight, and I def definitely want to suffer any sort of injury. All right. Let's take a look at the uh, knockout again, uh, Thomas, and you can describe what happened. Uh, he was quite short, looked to be about five, six and a half, maybe five, seven. We'll look at it again and uh, give us your uh, impressions of, uh, you know, when the fight started, what you what you thought about him and what you thought you could do. And that's what really happened. He was watching the faint, wasn't really watching me for what I was doing, just watching, had his mind definitely on the left hand. And I was able to sneak the right hand over top. Well, the first time you knocked him down was uh, just an absolutely tremendous right hand that caught him uh, cleanly. Were you throwing it over his left? We'll see that punch coming up. Right over his left hand. I shot it right over his left hand. At this point, uh, Gazzo has really not been able to get anything started on you. You looked in command right from the start. And uh, that height and reach advantage, I think, is something that's going to stand you well against all of the good welterweights. This is a, a tremendous division, including uh, Leonard and Duran and Benitez and Cuevas. And uh, it would have, there's that right hand. It would appear that you've got the, the punching power to, to handle anybody. Oh, yes. Yeah. I definitely think I have the punching power to take care of any of the welterweights in there, middleweights too. If there's any middleweight that would like to take Thomas on, I'm definitely ready. You came in at 149. Were you comfortable with that weight? What weight do you like to be at? Well, I usually come in for a well weight. I used to come in about 46. But I know I had to come in a little bit heavy because this guy was much heavier than I was. So I wanted to come in at least about 49, 50. You got him in plenty of trouble here now. You must have known the end was coming after you knocked him down the first time. Yes, I, I've seen it coming. I definitely, uh, he was like making a lot of false moves that he really shouldn't have made. And he was like, I was setting him up for the right hand I wanted to put over top. Well, let's go uh, look ahead a little bit to Pepino Cuevas as we're watching the end of this fight, the knockout at 241 of the first round. Uh, the fight apparently uh, has been made, uh, they hope, before July. What about your preparation now? What would that title mean to you, and, and how do you see the total picture since Leonard and Duran are fighting for the WBC crown? Well, that's the fight against Leonard and Duran, I think Leonard would beat Duran, but I think he would have a hard fight. Uh, because one, I, th I figure once Duran hit Leonard, then it would be a sort of, a, he would get on his bike and start moving a lot. So I think it would just be a lot of movement after Duran can catch up with Leonard. But I do think that Duran will be, I mean, Leonard will be Duran. All right, there's the finish of the second knockdown. And this one, he was not ready to go. He's counted out by the referee. And let's talk about your fight with Cuevas then. Uh, how do you see that? Uh, what do you feel about Cuevas, uh, and how do you rate him against Leonard and Duran? Well, I don't think um, Cuevas is the type of fighter as Sugar Ray is, but I, I figure him and Duran, Duran and Cuevas would be the same type of fighter. They both are sort of broader fighters. They keep, you know, steady, keep the pressure on. And that, that thing I like. I like when somebody try to keep the pressure on me. That way I can do an awful lot of move, counter move or a lot of pivot moves on a person. Well, Cuevas, of course, is a great puncher, too. Well, I'm not worried about that. That's something I don't need to worry about at all. All right. Good luck to you on that one. It should make a great fight along with the Sugar Ray Leonard Duran. Two great welterweight championship fights, and we hope that when that's all over, there'll be one welterweight champion uh, with the two winners meeting. Good luck to you, Thomas Hearn. Gold medal, but as undefeated as a light heavyweight, is in action this afternoon at Kayamisha Lake, New York against Murray Sutherland, who is ranked 10th by both the WBA and the WBC. 